Hello, in this video we are going to discuss about some other tools uh, for which are going to be useful for solving our project, in particular for part B. So this is our original program in which I applied certain modification. Mm -hmm. And I got some flag to enable disabled plotting. I want to put some variables for deciding you are going to play back lower or faster. I'm using the API here. I use a new version, which is almost identical to the one which you are using, but this one is adding some extra capabilities, which we don't need now for the moment, but maybe later it will be useful. The first step I'm doing here is very similar, but it's almost identical to what you did before. I'm loading a data set. The data set, uh, the loading was uh, successful, but now I'm also using this information, which is giving, um, uh, is telling us how many LiDAR events are going to happen in this playback session. So I'm getting this here because I want to predefine certain buffers. Yeah. Other thing which I'm doing here is uh, in this function, that is certain API function, which is good for extracting objects of interest from the LiDAR scan. And I'm well, trying to get here the reference to that API function in my local variable using friendly name, and you decide to use this name because it's in my program, you could use whatever name you prefer. This function will be useful for extracting, remember, the object of interest from the LiDAR scan. The rest of the things are very similar. I'm creating some extra graphic object, getting the handles because I want to visualize, to show something. I'm creating the buffer. Now I know that this is the number of samples which I'm going to need. Yeah. I create a buffer as before for the estimate from the kinematic model. Decide to create another now because I will be sampling the ground through. I also create this buffer which will be for measuring processing time. Two different processing time at each LiDAR event. One will be all the processing that we spend in that LiDAR event and the other will be just the calculation excluding the visualization. The rest of the program is very similar to what you do know from previous discussion. This is the same thing that we discussed before. Here is the kinematic model. The only reason not to perform in the kinematic model is that we realized that there was a reset. So we come back to the first uh, event um, and that's it. And the delta t may be zero sometime because we had two consecutive events which correspond to the same time. That is the, and we had the dispatcher here and this was the LiDAR event in which I'm using this function tick because I want to specify a reference here to for measuring the time, the processing time. So here I take in this time at this very first moment during the processing of the LiDAR event. And after that, I do some calculation as before. I'm also getting this variable, which is the number of LiDAR event in the data set because I want to use this for using the buffer. I want to copy certain variables to certain position in the buffer and I'm going to use this. This is going to be growing from 1 to NL. This is what is going to happen. Except we reset, it's going to come back to 1, you know, and, but usually it's going to go from 1 to NL. All right, so very soon I do the calculation that I used to do before in the previous discussion and converting from raw LiDAR scan to intensities and ranges, yes, for each of the LiDAR scans. And I do some other things that we, you already know about those. I convert them from this polar representation to Cartesian, yes. Yes, and the rest, I also convert from LiDAR coin frame to global coin frame. I decided in this case to use uh, the pose, the actual pose, the one that I got from the ground through for doing the conversion from LiDAR coin frame to global one, and from LiDAR number two to global one as well. And then I had this function, the one that I mentioned a moment ago for extracting cluster. Yes, this function uh, received the array of uh, ranges, and it's also receiving this uh, value, which is specifying the minimum value for a transition or change in values of range to infer that there is a discontinuity in the surface and that allowed this function to infer the cluster and this is telling also which is the maximum width of the cluster which I expect to 
receive here. Everything that is larger to that value is going to be ignored or is not going to be returned here. This function returns three variables. One is the number of clusters that have been detected, you know, in this instant or in this function. And these are certain properties and these are some other properties. If you have n object of interest, this will be n by three. We have three columns, and this will be n by two. We will have two, two columns. This one has three columns, uh, which are here. They will be the ap approximate width of the cluster, the range and the angle, because this is reporting the position of that, the center of that cluster in the LiDAR coin frame in polar. So this is the distance from zero, zero in the LiDAR coin frame to the center of that cluster. And this is the angular position of that uh, cluster in the LiDAR coin frame. And yes, and that is what is returning in this. And um, this, this other variable hmm, this is telling you the first, the number of the index of the first pixel and the index of the last pixel in that cluster. We are going to visualize this in the images. So you could use this function for obtaining the center of the object of interest that you need in B because it had two LIDAR here, two scan, one from LIDAR 1 and one from LIDAR 2. I'm doing the same thing for each of them. I get here the list of position of the object of interest in scan number one in LIDAR number one going in frame in polar, and the same for scan number two coming from LIDAR number two. Good. And then I have this function which convert whatever is in polar here to Cartesian because these angles are being reported in degrees. This one that I have here, they are in degrees. And because my calculations are using radian, I'm doing proper scaling. Okay, I do have this in Cartesian. And then in this case, I decide to convert to global because I want to visualize things or do something else, yes? From here. And that's it, after I did all the processing, I decide to measure the time respect to that initial time. And this is telling me the, that period of time from the tick to this talk, which is going to be in second. I multiply here to get this in millisecond and I put that value here. And I have here a flag that do you want to visualize something to plot something to update the plot? If that thing is equal to one, it's going to do all this visualization thing. And then after that, I decide to take sample of certain variables and record this in my buffer. I'm here now, oh, okay, I'm here measuring again the time respect to that initial time because I want to measure all the time, all the processing time, not just the calculation, but also the visualization things. And then I have these two times, which I put here in one of the samples of this buffer. And I do here something similar for recording the pose from the kinematic model. And I also have the other for the ground through. And I do a pause here. When I finish this uh, event loop, I'm doing the plotting. I will run the program now. Get the program running. I will stop for a second here. I want to show you this. This is showing in polar or LiDAR number one. These are all the points. And here I'm showing in red the points which are reflective. In this case, all all of these were being highly reflective in this pole. And this uh, square in which is light blue is showing an estimate of the center of this cluster. The parameter DL that I did mention a moment ago is talking about this, this transition. So we have all this point coming here. That is the way that the, the LiDAR is scanning ta, 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 and suddenly it has a transition. Ta, 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 ta and have another transition. And um, when this change in range, pixel after pixel, is lower than this DL, we assume that we are on the same surface or on the same segment or on the same, on the same cluster. When we have a transition which is higher than DL, we are assuming that there was a transition. So here there was a transition because it was maybe more than 80 centimeters. And here we have another transition, which is going to be 
a value in magnitude more than 80, cent 80 centimeters. That's what the specification we have there. Okay, good. I keep running. Uh, if I go here, you will see these are the object. There was a pole here, and we got all these points in the LiDAR scan, and this should correspond to some of these, yes? Um, and the same for the other. We, I'm showing here all the all the objects of interest coming from both LiDAR. Mm -hmm. This is why we have object ahead and behind the, the platform. Good. The rest is the same that you did before, showing all the LiDAR points scanned in the global coin frame. So this thing will continue running. I stop here. I'm showing this segment from the certain center of the platform to the each of the objects of interest. That was for improving visualization to see which were the objects of interest being detected by the platform. But we don't request that in the specification of the process or project. And you don't care about that. Yes. That was also using some of the API helper function. But this will continue running. We'll keep this running so we see the result. Going to finish very soon. I don't remember the delay that they specify in the program. I think I put 30 milliseconds or something at each LiDAR event. So the animation is not going to be too fast, but it's not going to be too slow. And we have this soon to finish. Okay, here we have. So because I did record all the posts according to the kinematic model and all the posts according to the ground through, so I'm conditioned to get this discrepancy. And this was the discrepancy in distance between each of the position corresponding to the ground through and to the prediction produced by the kinematic model. And we could see here, it was having a drift, it was growing up, you know. During this is all the set of uh, LiDAR events. And it was always lower than six millimeter, which is definitely lower than the three centimeter we did specify uh, in the project. And here also for the angular or the heading, which uh, we did specify one degree, I'm showing this in degrees and also a very small value. Okay, this is what you should see in your result. And this is very good in the sense that with accuracy, and this is because we are using very nice data free of noise. So the kinematic will be very consistent with the ground through. And the other thing which I'm showing here are the processing times. Yeah, the red one corresponds to the full, more exactly to all the effort invested in doing calculation. That is the one extracting the, the you know, ranges and intensity from the each of the lidar scan, also converting to whatever coin kind of frame we needed to do, and also is doing the object of the interest detection and is uh, converting to global dose and all these things. And then the light blue correspond to the full processing we invest in each LiDAR event. This is the red one plus all the cost of doing visualization. Yeah. And okay, the specification was that this one should be lower than five milliseconds. So in average here, you will see is about that. It may be that you have some spike here which are going to reach five milliseconds. That is no problem at all. We are not going to pay attention to that. And that is also sometimes due to the your computer very busy with other processes. Now I was running at the same time Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams should be consuming certain CPU. Let me see. My CPU is at 52%. I don't know what is that um, processes. Microsoft Teams should be in certain place. Well, it's consuming certain amount of memory, <laughs> one gigabyte. And it's in this case, by well, consuming 5% of the CPU. All right. Yes, that is what I wanted to mention. I think we are done with this explanation.